you may not have quite realized this yet, but the majority of times when Jesus taught was predominantly outside. He tended to be found where people associated themselves. Not always in just the one place where you would find someone, say, talking or relating or having, as it were, those times where, you know, you get together and you go to the store, maybe, you know, down at the mall, sit in the mall and, you know, kind of watch the people go by. Wasn't always about the time that you would think that someone would, you know, be there. Rather, sometimes he just went out in the desert to be alone. And guess what happened? The people followed him there. So it wasn't really about being inside as it was about being outside. You see, sometimes things happen more outside the camp than they do inside the camp. Now that expression doesn't apply very well when you start talking about being in church or outside church. But the way that it means and the way that it applies bluntly is, hey, you got to get out of a pew to see what people do. I mean, no offense, it's easy to be a Christian when you're sitting inside of a steeple, you're sitting inside with people, you're doing and acting according to a certain prescribed manner or a organized religion or a Seder or a planned program where, of course, everyone stands at a certain time, everyone prays at a certain time, everyone says certain words, everyone does certain things. But is that what God is about? Is it about a certain set routine? Is it about your religion? Is it about your ideas? Or is it about getting to know someone who's a little more involved in your life every day than he is only on Sunday? Or for some people that you know are a little weird or try to push certain ideas, Saturday. Now, at Video Church on Sunrise Service, and particularly during a Sunday series that we're doing now as we walk and talk, um, I got news for you. It's not about inside and it's not about outside. It's what's inside you, not what's outside you. You see, the externals are nice. Don't get me wrong. I like being in a nice, warm atmosphere, you know, kind of sitting and relaxing, you know, checking out the latest boob tube, you know, television program, seeing if there's a football game on or, or perusing the movies or perusing, you know, the venues that I can have with, you know, our new technologies that have, you know, recording devices attached to the TV so we can watch things when we want to. Well, you can do that with church now, too. Did you know that? You can pick your favorite pastor or your favorite teaching, your favorite ministry, and be a part of that. And we're not opposed to that. But even when you go and worship, as you tend to be like most people, if you do this, you probably go where you like the music. You probably go where you know the song. You probably go where you enjoy having a worship service. You know, I mean, almost every church has heard, hey, you know, we worship in spirit and truth. So now it's a cliche. Everybody worships in spirit and truth. But the truth is, what is the truth? And that's where I find it kind of interesting is that we can talk about that and we can pretend that we're the ones with the truth. But I got a different way and point of view of looking at it. You see, I think you are the truth. The truth is, you know what's true for you. If it's true that you particularly enjoy sitting in some setting and that's the only way that you experience God in a personal and intimate way, well, dare I say, then that's the only way you do. But God wanted you to be more. And that's why Jesus wasn't only confined, resigned, or sitting in the temple at the end of his life preaching to those that would listen, but rather he was outside the temple, going to people's homes and houses, meeting them at the well, meeting them in their everyday life. 
I guess what I'm trying to say in this Sunday series is, what are you doing today? Are you limiting God by what you do and what you say? Are you participating only in the way that you're comfortable? Are you not taking God everywhere you can today? In other words, I see God everywhere I go. I mean, it doesn't matter whether I'm going to church doesn't, on today on Sunday series, or if I'm going to, oh, I don't know, a temple, or if I'm going to a mosque, if I'm going to a shul, if I'm going to a synagogue, if I'm going to a, uh, I said church, fellowship, home Bible study. It doesn't really matter to me, you know, because everywhere I've gone, pardon me, but God has spoken to me. God isn't limited by our limitations. God is called the limitless one. I mean, really, he really is called that. I mean, I know some people go, what? That's not what I heard. I heard he was called, you know, um, God or Jehovah or Yahweh or Yahya or whatever they call him nowadays. But really, that's not what he said. It's what people have added to the meaning. One of the things that God has inspired me with is to check it out. Meaning that anytime I hear something is cool, I want to go see. You know, like, hey, if there was a Toronto experience, then I wanted to go see what that really is. And not for me. <laughs> when people said that they hear from God, I wanted to check that out. And frankly, I do believe that people hear from God. That doesn't mean that I think that everyone that's on television does, but I check it out. So when I was told certain things by Jesus in the Bible, I wanted to check it out. And once I did, I found out what is true and what is factual and what is actual for me. And so after I began to do that, then God began to speak to me. He began to show me things. He began to have a trust in our relationship that I established with him. You see, that's the bottom line is that God wants to have a relationship with you. He meets you basically where you are. He doesn't accept you the way you are. He meets you where you are. That acceptance thing is kind of a weird idea that, you know, you got to take it with a grain of salt because don't look too close, but it might be stepped on and scrunched on the feet of men because they'll make it into something that it was never intended to be. But this unconditional love isn't quite the way he said it. It's more like he loves you, period. That's a better way of putting it. Because even love can separate itself from evil. But the bottom line is that God wanted you. God chose you. God decided and determined that he would be able to communicate with you. He, better than me or anyone else around you, can talk to you. Now I know there's lots of people that today are just like the children of Israel in the desert. Children of Israel, man, they, you know, they get freed up, you know, they get left. They decide to go, you know, out into the desert to worship the Lord as they were told that their forefathers had done. They decided to go and study, you know, and learn these things that they had known at one time. But like any kind of people, they kind of got caught up in the cultural thing, you know. Have you ever done that? You know, get caught up in something that's bigger than you are and you get all excited about it and you're like, oh yeah, this is cool, you know? I mean, I remember being into, you know, the last dregs of the Jesus, or the last dregs of the hippie movement, you know? It was like, oh, let's all grow long hair, you know? And so we all did. Let's all wear, you know, beatnik clothes or ponchos or, you know, uh, suede leather coats. I mean, you know, it was a cultural thing. Have you ever been kind of like excited about that? You know, and it seems like a good idea. Now, I'm a little bit older now and looking back 40 years ago or more, it looks a little kind of like goofy to me, but hey, some people are kind of trying to revive it, you know, and I just laugh about it because it's funny. But that's what happened to the children of Israel. They'd gotten caught up kind of into the Egyptian thing, you know, they walk like an Egyptian, you know, and that's what they were doing. God saw his people and they had started to become like Egyptians, act like Egyptians. They were absorbed by Egyptian culture. So he wanted them to not be Egyptian. So he delivered them from Egypt, brought them out with a strong hand, said, look, this is what I am. And he decided and defined what 
rules and laws and regulations would reveal who he is, what he is, and how he is. And the people went, um, okay. But when they got close, they were scared because, frankly, they knew that they were sinners. They knew they were wrong. They knew they were doing things they shouldn't do. They had partied hardy right there at the mountain, and God was not pleased. So they said, you, Moses, you go up the mountain. You know, you go find out what it is God wants, and then tell us. Well, you know, that works for a while. You know, and I don't fault you for wanting to do that, you know. And maybe you do. Maybe you're one of those people that wants to, you know, go ahead and have someone else tell you what to do. Americans usually don't want that. They put up with that for a while. But Jesus never said that. He said, if any man would follow me, if you would come to me, if you would be my disciple, if you would be a Christian, then you have to do something yourself. You can't just slide by in the pew in the back and what you do. Eventually, you're going to get some confidence, slowly but surely. Eventually, you're either going to get better or you're going to get worse. And if you don't participate in what God is doing in your life, then God isn't in your life. And that's kind of sad to say because I know for my life, I pretty much have enjoyed everything God has brought my way. Been tough, been rough, a couple times nearly killed me, but bottom line is, looking back, man, I wouldn't give it up for the world. It's been one of the most exciting rides in my life. Journeys and experiences that I could ever imagine for anyone to have, except for stepping into eternity. And I look forward to that. But walking with Jesus today, there's a lot of voices out there that could tell you what to do, where to go, and what to say. We even have a president that's telling you what he wants you to do. And I got news for you. You don't need someone to tell you what to do. You need to ask God what he wants you to do. You need to walk with God today in a humble and sincere way. You need to ask him to take you one day home to be with him. Because soon, and you know it too, the world's going to end. And if it doesn't end sooner than you think, it's probably going to end for you because you'll be old and die. But either way, it's not over. You see, there is eternity, and you need to spend that eternity with God. But the choice is yours. You can do what you want to do. But God would prefer, Jesus would prefer, the Spirit of God would prefer that you come to Him today. You don't got to get all spiritual about it. You don't got to get weird. You just got to say someplace, get alone and pray and just simply say, hey, God, I'm yours. Take me, I'm yours. That's it. You don't got to get too weird and get all super goofy. But then if you want to go to church, go find out what you did or go add more to it if you want to. But I got news for you. God is so interested in your life to be a part of it. He'll probably start speaking directly to you. He'll probably use a Bible or something else, maybe, or devotionals, but he can speak to you if you're really genuinely wanting him to. And believe it or not, there's a lot of people who really don't want to hear from God today. I hope you're not one of those people.